In 1993, on a very wet 29th of August in Oslo, a young Lance Armstrong, aged 21, represented the USA at the World Championships and took to the start with the 170 other riders in the wet conditions. 1993 was Lance Armstrong's first season as pro and coming to the start line of this World Championships, he had already won the million dollar triple crown in the United States and a stage in that year's Tour de France. On the start line, he was joined by cycling legends such as Miguel Indurain, Johan Museo, Laurent Jalabert and many others, so a very strong field. Wet and cold conditions proceeded throughout the entire race. It started as a drizzle and became heavier as the race progressed. The course was 14 laps of an 18.4 km circuit that finished outside the city hall of Oslo. There were two climbs on the circuit, the 4 km Ruyenberg, followed by the Eckenberg, which had a 10 km downhill and a flat section followed. As we join the race, there's one lap to go with a break of two riders and a strong group following the break with Lance Armstrong and Miguel Enderrein in the group. There are three riders on the front, Olaf Ludwig of Germany, Franz Massen of the Netherlands, and Norway's hope for the day, Dag Otto Lauritsen. All established riders who had all won stages in the Tour de France. As the trio make their way up the Rian climb, Dag Otto hits out on the two others and manages to forge a gap. Clearly, Olaf and Massen couldn't decide who was going to chase down Dag Otto. And in the chasing group, there are two riders that have managed to escape, followed by the main chasers where one rider is trying to close the gap to the duo and moments later we can see that it is in fact Lance Armstrong himself. The next shot shows us Dag Otto in the lead and Lance Armstrong charging up the climb and we can see that Lance Armstrong managed to drop the two riders he was chasing down and he only has Masson on his wheel. Near the top Dag Otto has about five seconds of a lead to Armstrong and Masson and the other chasers are not far behind. Armstrong closes the gap to Dag Otto and immediately ups the tempo to maintain the gap they have on the chasers. Masson tries to attack the two others, but Armstrong is quick to react and is looking very fresh at this point. Every time Armstrong comes through to do a turn, the tempo is lifted and Dag Otto struggles to hang on. French rider Gerard Rui tries to bridge the gap to the trio from the main chasers right before we come to a descent where Armstrong notably begins to pull away. The descent looks horrendously wet and potentially very slippery so the riders behind Armstrong are more cautious but the Texan just goes for it. The chasers are not far behind at this point. The next shot shows us exactly how much of a gap Armstrong has built up and he's disappearing up the front. The chasing trio look very tired compared to Armstrong up the Eckberg and are struggling to pick up the pace to close the Texan down. Not long after, Masson increases the tempo and at this point, the race is over for the plucky Dagotto Lauritsen and the duo carry on without him in pursuit of the Texan. Near the top of the Eckenberg, we can see the high cadence employed by Armstrong compared to the two chasers who are being brought back by none other than Miguel Indurain, the tour monster himself, who that year had won both the Tour de France and the Giro d'Italia and was aiming to complete the famous triple crown of cycling that hadn't been done since Stephen Roach back in 1987 and didn't want some 21 year old Texan to rob him of that achievement. Armstrong continued his solo search up the hill and not far behind the chasing duo were nearly caught by the Indorion group. Moments later Armstrong takes up his race cap and at this point I would just like to point out how badass Armstrong is at this early age. He's wearing absolutely nothing. No leg warmers, no arm warmers or rain jacket despite the conditions being horrendous with the heavy rain and temperatures below 10 degrees. Truly a badass racer at heart. Armstrong continues to try and up the pace and we can see that the chasers are trying to work together behind him. The Italian star Claudio Capucci is in the group with Indorine and the gap has opened up to 20 seconds. Coming down the descent of the Eckberg, Armstrong is cautious to take every corner carefully not to slip on the wet. Equally as cautious are the chasers and they seem to be working well together at this point but Armstrong is still working as hard as he can and he even gets a moment to look back. The chasers begin to attack each other at this point with the Italian team being very cooperative which is something they aren't normally at world championships with Giovatti attacking with two other riders and Chiapucci 
place a perfect teammate by refusing to work with the other chasers to close this gap. Armstrong is still maintaining his advantage in these horrid conditions and the three wannabe breakaway riders are brought back as Italy send another rider up the road utilizing their advantage in numbers in this group. The chasers let up the pace and with that Armstrong's lead grows even more as Masson looks frustratingly back at the other chasers. Kiapucci is the solo rider chasing Armstrong and is a very established and decorated rider who finished second in the Tour de France the year before and won the San Sebastian Classic only four weeks prior to this race. The gap is about 20 seconds with just over two kilometers to the finish. The chasers look like they've stopped cooperating now and this might be down to the excellent teamwork being done by the Italian team. But a counter-attack is done by three riders. Meanwhile, at the front, Armstrong is maneuvering around the last few corners in Oslo as he comes to the finish straight and he finally realizes mission complete he is the new world champion in his first full season as a professional for the United States. Miguel Indurain manages to win the sprint to claim the silver and by that he almost completed the triple crown. Lance Armstrong became the third youngest world champion after Carol Kears in 1934 and Jean-Pierre Monzer in 1970. Little did this Texan know how much of an impact he would have on the world of cycling. That's it for this video. Make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel to not miss out on any of our videos. And as always, thank you for watching and see you next time.